What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Wade Paquin. On the Build Show today, we're gonna talk about this framing. Wade, this is a little wonky. This is totally different. You Yankees do it differently than we do. Yankees and wonky? <laughs> what are you rednecks do down south? What's so different? <laughs> Today's Build Show, all about New England framing. Let's get going. You guys know my buddy Wade Paquin. We're here in the coastal Rhode Island area. Gorgeous house, Wade. Thanks, Matt. Let's talk about the framing and why this might be different here than the way I frame in Texas. So first off, I'm noticing right away when I walk up, what's up with the plywood and then the zip R on top of it? Yeah, so because- For sheathing, that is. Right, because we're on the water here on the coast, we're in a high wind zone. I can't use just the zip R9 board as my you know sheathing panel because mm -hmm. of shear and not we don't have the shear capability gotcha. when we start using the zip so how do you combat that you put the cdx ply on first that's just half inch cdx and then we're putting kind of that skin that outer exterior insulation over it so we're getting our exterior insulation and our wrb and that zip system right that all in one awesome zip system yeah, that's pretty fantastic I'm guessing the winds get pretty high based on it being a very sunny and normal day and it's already windy, but do you know what the kind of wind load on the house might be? What's the yeah, engineer could, have to account for? It could be 130, 140 miles an hour here. I mean, we've, we, we get strong nor'easters. Hurricane season officially is underway, so we can see tropical storms, hurricanes up here. Um, but you, know, you can tell it's already breezy here. Yeah. Where we're on the other job site, there was no wind. So yep. the, the ocean, there's always wind coming off the ocean. And when, certainly when you get storms, it's that much more intense. Holy cow. Uh, your framer Shevcon construction appears to be hand cutting this roof. Mm -hmm. Is that typical for you guys? Are you guys doing a lot of roof trusses? Are you hand cutting mostly? What's the scoop there? Uh, we do not usually do roof trusses. Um, is there a reason? Not really. I like kind of the hands-on custom framing of stick building the roof. Yeah. It's my favorite part of the framing phase. Frankly, it's my favorite part of the framing process <laughs> just because it's so complex, right? Yeah. Roof framing is complicated. This is a very complicated roof. It looks like it. it. And we have living space up there. We've got to factor in for that, for mechanicals and other things. So oftentimes with the type of custom homes we do, Roof trusses just don't make sense. They don't, they don't really work for us. So yeah. that's why we end up uh, kind of hand cutting this. And I noticed that giant LVL ridge beam and it looks like on this valley right here, uh, he's even cut a notch in that valley so your roof plywood's gonna come together on there. Yeah, that's two LVLs with the bevel to make up the plane of the each roof plane coming down so the plywood Ooh. can come right over there and make a nice tight fit. That's some good craftsmanship right yeah, there. Dimitri doesn't, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't miss, miss many details. <laughs> yeah. No, he doesn't. Let's jump inside, we'll show you some more details. All right. Matt, before we uh, hop in the house, we should take a quick peek at this here. So this is all part of our shear wall system that wraps around the corner of the garage. Because we have so much glass and window and doors here to take in those water views, the structural engineer wasn't really left with a heck of a lot of exterior <laughs> wall space to, ha to have shear. So, yeah. um, so a lot of the exterior walls where there's not a, an opening is, is shear. And here's a great example of the exterior side of a shear wall with that CDX and these aren't nails that are just randomly put in by the framer yep. who wants to put this many nails in. This is all in the plan. This is all by design from the structural engineer that says, you know, horizontally and vertically, here's the type of nail you need, here's the length of the nail, here's the gauge of the nail, and here's the spacing on the nail. And you can see they're pretty, you know, we don't measure out every nail, but right. you can see there's pretty good consistency with the spacing. And also that he, our framer paid attention to not blowing these nails, you know, halfway or further through the CDX. You know, yep. they're just breaking the surface. So, you know, just that level of, of detail. That and even chalk line that. where the studs were too in a bunch of places just to make sure he You're absolutely, absolutely hit hitting it. it. Yep. And so not only do you have a single double stud, you've got a whole wall of double studs. Is that sheer as well? It's all sheer. Yeah. So we got double studs all the way around here over to our left, um, but not the whole house. Just again, this is all, these are calculations. And look at those hold downs. Yeah, this looks like we're in 
California seismic zone. Yeah, almost. there's I think over 30 or 40 hold downs here mm. on the house. So dang. So let's go through that. Right, shear is the racking of yep. the house on a horizontal wind load, and the hold downs are your uplift. Right. Yep. So you come in, you, these windows blow out, the house wants to naturally lift off the foundation, let's say. This is holding and anchoring the house down. Yeah, the other thing that I'm noticing is with these double studs, with a solid corner you probably needed uh, for those hold downs, that zip R on the outside, that continuous R9, really makes a big difference here in New England where it gets pretty cold. Continuous mm -hmm. insulation on the outside. Yeah, That's you could have, a, this is facing east for the most part. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of nor'easters here in the winter, right? It could be three degrees out and blowing 40, so your wind chill is Holy whatever, yeah. 30 below. It's <laughs> crazy. You know, this and, gonna and help. as you look towards the water, I mean, there's hardly any solid sheathing whatsoever around that corner. Right, yeah, I think there's over 60 feet of glazing glass here Jeez. for taking these views. That's wild. Yeah. Above me, though, this is. Oh, like, I know where you're going with <laughs> this, this man. Iconic, yeah. New England. All the Southern builders like me are like, "What the heck is that weirdo? Yeah. One by on the ceiling." Yeah. Anytime you and I have talked about this, or we've talked about it on social media, a lot of people get it, and we find other areas of the country. I guess Miami and parts of Florida. This is pretty common in yeah. some other pockets, but for the most part, outside of New England, this is like it's unusual. It's craziness. Um, so what do you call it? Ceiling, ceiling strapping, furring. Yep, okay. it's a one by three, so it measures three quarter by like two and a half. Um, it and looks like it comes pretty long. Are those fourteen footers? Maybe, uh, you or? can get them as little as eight, eight, eight foot bundles, but we buy them sixteen foot bundles. Okay. This isn't a big. It's not a big expense for a project, and it's not a big labor time suck either. A lot of people, oh, that's to have to put that into the project. It's you know in the budget. It's it's not that big of a deal. It's not that much labor and material to do it. So what is it allowing us to do? One, it's stiffening up the floor system. Yeah. It's allowing us to have- Keeping those floors from doing this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's allowing us a channel for the electrician. And I know this isn't code everywhere, but here it is, where the electrician can staple his wires right- Oh, he doesn't the, have to drill. He doesn't have to drill. Oh, he that's can awesome. staple it right to the bottom side of the joist oh, and, and just run his wiring. Oh, that's super nice. Yep. And if you have, like if this wasn't engineered joist, and it was just like say a regular two by 12, let's say, or two by 10, that nowadays are inconsistent in their dimensioning, we would have the ability to, you know, laser or string this down and make, shim the fairing strips down to make a perfectly flat ceiling. That's really nice. And there's nice. some other perks to it too, but these are just a couple of the things. That's interesting you mentioned that. I, I hadn't thought about it, but I joist in this house, but I do see a lot of uh, solid two by eight, two by 10, maybe even two by 12 joists. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of floor trusses around here. Is that pretty uncommon to see floor trusses? Just like you guys aren't using roof trusses? It's more just because of the complexity of these types of custom homes. Yeah. Um, a lot of times we're using our attic space for you know, mechanicals and equipment. So we want the space. We, we want to be able to insulate that in a, in a certain way. Yeah. Um, and um, I also think it's interesting that you guys generally have basements. Mm -hmm. So you've got uh, HVAC equipment downstairs running up, mm -hmm. whereas a lot of times we have our equipment in the attic. And so we're using these joist bay areas for big duct work. And that would be harder to do, certainly, in this scenario. Yeah, you couldn't. Right, yeah. right. So, yeah. Unless we'll, you had a Unico system. Maybe. Right, right. Typically, well, that still would be a little tricky on something like this. But sure. that's why traditionally we will have a zone or multiple zones in the basement, floor feeding the first floor. And we could have, say, in an attic, one, two, three zones, ceiling feeding the second floor. So yeah. we're not doing it like uh, we, you guys do in the South, I yes, guess. for sure. But some of the other perks too, like this is a perfect example right over us, right? That's, every guy in the South has seen this and it's caused a problem in their drywall. Right, so like then that's my question to you, right? So you have a, a beam here, mm -hmm. a flush beam, yep. with hangers on it. It's so, so hard to get that looking nice. I mean, a lot of times, a really uh, good framer who's getting paid well might plane off uh, an eighth of an inch of those eye joists and flush up his hangers. Sure, but, there's ways to but that's mitigate rare. this, right? Yeah. But like, is every framer going to do that in the South? Yeah. No. 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 So th this allows us to kind of bypass that inconsistency of where the hanger is the beam. Yeah. Or when you have a situation like this where we have our saddle oh, yeah. for that beam yeah. welded on and you've got a half inch of steel plus some shims, if this if this project didn't have strapping and yeah. you were putting your sheetrock or wallboard yeah, right to the be. ceiling, 
a mess. What do you do? You uh, cut around it and then you gotta patch it in. Like, tape it, yeah. something. <laughs> right. A shout out to your framer too. Check this out, Wade. You yeah. probably don't even think about it because you guys do it so often, but yeah, the notch. looks to me like he notched where that mm -hmm. steel beam is, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, it's pretty yep. wild. That looks great. So typical to see two by eight SPF. Uh, yeah, it's all lumber. SPF, yep. Southern, uh, or pardon me, spruce, spruce pine. pine spruce fur. pine fur, rather. Yep. Uh, two by six framing. Do you ever see any builders locally not using uh, either zip or plywood for shear wall? Like in Texas, we sometimes see cardboard sheathing. You guys see that at all? I've never personally seen that with these <laughs> eyes or uh, even heard of that around here. Uh, so that's scary to me. Yeah, that's it is scary. scary. It's scary to me as well. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, even the low end around here, like, you know, um, you know track home style builders, production builders around here. Um, you see a lot of like OSB yeah. with like, uh, I won't mention any names, but you know, uh, a house wrap product that's yep. white. Um, that's, you know, seems others. like zip is really taken off a new one. Zip is, I would, I, I don't work for zip, but I would venture to guess that this is probably one of their better markets yeah. for their product. They really got a lot it of It makes a lot of here. sense up here mm -hmm. in this environment. I mean, yeah. We've got four crazy seasons up here. We have a hundred over hundred degree swing in temperature on a yearly basis here. So and the wind and storm. So and zip yeah. bar makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. Talk to me about stairs. Are these temp treads, but final uh, stair wrap or stair yep. joists? Yep, just temp treads. Uh, yep. Okay, so then will your finished carpenter put down a final tread later? Will that temp tread stay on? What's happening with, with stair framing typically around here? Uh, so sometimes the stringers that are cut stay as permanent and we just replace the treads and stringers the word I couldn't think of stringer, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <They're> stringers <laughs> yeah 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 so uh, st so those treads then will stay on or those uh, I'm not off? sure I'd have to ask my project manager okay, so I know it depends a little bit I, like on another job that this PM has going right now that's a little further along than this one the stairs are in place like that but they're coming out and one of our finished carpentry teams is building the entire stair in the shop and bringing it and just dropping it in. I've so we've been doing that a lot based. lately. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's it's, really sweet. It's a really good fit um, that way. And it's just more controlled because you're in the shop and can really get it dialed in. Yeah, for sure. What am I missing? Anything else uh, framing wise? We talked about floors, we talked about strapping. Uh, stairs, I think we, we hit the main place. I'm curious what's different down south. You know, this is uh, unusual yeah, so a little, for, little bit. What other things? For instance, are... in Texas where I am, I almost never anymore, at least in custom homes, see eye joists. Uh, almost always floor trusses. Uh, and I really like roof, uh, hand cut roofs and real roof uh, rafters, but it's ubiquitous to see roof trusses. Not a bad thing necessarily, uh, but not the best use for future use of that space for sure. You end up with sticks all over the place mm -hmm. rather than big open attics like mm -hmm. you got here. Mm -hmm. uh, Advantech is pretty typical for us as well. Uh, although because I run my trusses, my floor trusses on 24 inch on center, we a lot of times use the really thick inch and an eighth Advantech. Whereas it looks like you're on 16 inch on centers here. Right. You just have less in your ceilings. I suspect you've got recessed cans and maybe that's it, where mm -hmm. I'm running ductwork all kinds of ways mm -hmm. in my floor systems. Mm -hmm. My floors are also a lot taller. Uh, it's not unusual for us to do 18 or even 24 inch deep floor trusses. Mm, so true. you have a lot more stairs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tend to think of the South as being a really high ceiling kind of a marketplace. So it looked to me like we're maybe nine foot here and eight foot up or some version of that in a lot of the New England houses. Yeah, we'd be around nine foot to nine six is typical for first floor. Okay. Uh, about eight six on second floor. I like that. That's a very human scale for me. I also yeah. grew up in the Northeast, right. whereas Texas tends to have really big, uh, you know, a lot of new houses, 10, even 12 foot ceiling heights on the first floor. So it's true everything's bigger in Texas? Everything so. is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Wade, this redneck is impressed. This is some nice framing going on here. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. As a Yankee, that's a very nice compliment the from Yankees, a redneck. The Yankees did it well <laughs> over here. Super fun video. I love getting out with Wade. He's an amazing builder right there on the coast of Rhode Island. And guys, if you're not already following Wade's content, he built some unbelievable houses and he did a whole series on a house built on Block Island, which is off the coast of Rhode Island. So you gotta go over to thebuildshow.com, click on that hamburger menu, you'll see Build Experts, go to Wade, see his bio video, check out his, his other videos. 
And by the way, of course, you can follow him on Instagram as well, at WKP Construction. Super amazing builder, guys. I'm super thankful to have Wade and the other 15 or so contributors on thebuildshow.com. With that being said, guys, hit that subscribe button if you're new to our channel. We do new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. Right now in the summer, we're doing a best of series on Tuesdays, and then I've got my brand new videos on Friday. With that being said, follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.